Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity. There's a week Sabbath peace of it. Goodness gracious. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, mm -hmm. peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that uh that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints uh in the chat, to the saints scattered all the way around the world that we haven't met yet. But no peace to the wicked. We only say to them, repent that they might live. All right. So uh last week <clears throat> we had part two of uh Yahushua teaching. And he he taught the people as if he, you know what I'm saying, like he had authority. He wasn't teaching people like 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 he was kind of guessing. You know what I'm saying? When I when I stand up here, we might look at the book and we might be like, okay, well, Isaiah the prophet, well, I think Isaiah meant X, Y, and Z. He probably meant, you know what I'm saying? I might use words like I think and probably and my opinion is and I imagine and all types of stuff. When you hear me teach, you know, I might say that, right? But not Yahushua. When Yahushua teaches, he is like, no, that's what happened. And this is exactly how it happened. And this is exactly what you should do. And if you do it this way, then you'll be saved. He's giving it to you matter of fact, right? And so when people look at it, they're looking like, all right, okay, this man teaching like he know what he's talking about. This man actually teaching like, I don't know, like he wrote the book, right? So this is something that, that, that the people had to kind of deal with and wrestle with. Like, who does he think he is on one side, right? One side of the people like, who does this man think he is? But on the other side, they're looking at him like, oh, this man is a wise man with authority, right? So we went over, we went over a couple chapters of him doing all this teaching, and we're going to go over uh, one last chapter of this teaching. This is what was customarily called the Sermon on the Mount, right? We call it, you know what I'm saying? We just call it the teaching of him, you know what I'm saying? Teaching as if he had authority. It's the examples of what he was saying. When the book say he taught as if he had authority. So we're gonna we're gonna pick it up. We got a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and pick it up at uh Matthew chapter seven, verse one. I think I think last time we left off about well, seven verse five. Uh, but let's go to seven verse one. We're gonna read it again. Cause everybody know this part. He's gonna say, Judge not, lest ye be judged. You know what I'm talking about? Judge not, lest ye be darn judged. Let me see. This is uh Matthew chapter seven, verse one. What's the book say? You on mute? Judge not that ye be not judged. Mm -hmm. With what judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Right? So he said, look, don't judge or else you're going to be judged. Because... Whatever judgment you judge, you know what I'm saying? Whatever judge, judgment you find to be appropriate, that's going to be the same judgment that's put back on you. Remember, we talked about how, how David, David was given a situation about a, a man and a sheep, you know what I'm saying? Or a man and a lamb, I think it was a lamb or sheep, one of those. And uh, it was his only sheep, you know what I'm saying? And because of that, you know what I'm saying? The rich man took his sheep, killed it. And David was like, oh, no, that rich man should be put to death for that, right? And the prophet came back to him and was like, okay, I'm happy that's your judgment. Because that same judgment needs to be applied to you because you took a man's wife and killed him over it. It's the same principle as what, what the prophet was saying. So the same judgment that David had for, the, for this other man is the same judgment that the Most High God was going to help hold him against, right? So we want to look at it and we want to kind of keep going. Watch this. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Right. So he said, when you look and you find an issue with somebody else and then you give a judgment. Right. It's not just it's not making an assessment. Right. Judgment can be used many ways. Right. This is saying you've made a decision on what should happen to this person. 
when he's saying judge not yet lest you be judged, he's talking about you assessing the situation and then you make a decision of what should happen to that person, right? Mel, you were wrong for this. Therefore, you should pay this amount of money, right? You, you stole. Therefore, you should return it and pay extra, right? You got into a fight. You broke his arm. Therefore, he should be able to break your arm, right? It's you judging a situation and saying, this is how the outcome should be. This is how we make this situation right. What y'all sure is saying is you can't sit there and look and see that it's somebody in something in somebody else's eye and try to make a decision and an assessment on how it can be made right. If you got something even bigger in your eye, he's saying first, go ahead and read it. So how will you then say to your brother, let me pull out the moat that is in thine eye and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite. First cast Sorry, out give me some water. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Right? Hypocrite. So his instruction is, before you go and you try to assess what's inside of your brother's eye, first get the thing that's bigger in your eye, take care of that first. Right? Take it. Now you can see clear. Once you get that out of your eye, now you can see clearly and be like, okay, I can see exactly what's in your eye, and I know how to make it right. I can tell you exactly what needs to happen to make it right. Right. It's a lot of people that do it out of order. They don't get their self right first. They out here just most high God, give them a little bit. And what they do, they take it and they run with it. Right. Give them a little bit of a revelation. Give them a little bit of an understanding of the book. And then what they do is they take it and they run with it. And that's why we got so many churches. That's why you look across. Look, if you drive in my neighborhood, right. You drive in my neighborhood right over here. Right. What you got on the corner? Big old church. Right. Across the street, right here, another church, right? Right here, another church. Around the way over here, another church. Another church right there, another church right there. It's some good barbecue right there. And then right next to it, another church. And then across the street from that, another church. Why would you need so many churches in one area? None of them agree with each other. None of them teach the right thing. None of them teach the same thing. But guess what all of them do? Every one of them looking at this same book. Ain't no difference in it. They all looking at the exact same book. But they all teach something different, believe something different, and none of them get along. You know why that happens? Because the Most High God gives you a little bit and you say, oh, I understand that, Lord. And before getting yourself right, you jump out there trying to teach. You jump out there trying to judge situations and say what's right and what's wrong and all that when you don't know what's right and wrong yet because you still got something in your eye. That's what he's telling you. When you do that and when you get to telling people what's right and what's wrong and you haven't taken care of yourself first, the same judgment that you're saying what's right and wrong with, that same judgment is going to be put back on you. In other words, you're going to be made out to be a hypocrite. Right. Keep going. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Right? He said, don't give that which is holy unto the do dogs. If something is set apart, don't give it to the dogs. What that mean? Keep one. Watch this. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Lest he said, neither cast ye your pearls be before what? Swine. What swine? Pig. That's right. Male know what it is. You probably eat pork. Right? He said, he said, don't cast it to the swine. What is he talking about when he says that? He's talking about pigs, but what is he actually talking about? He's using pigs as a metaphor. What is he actually talking about? People that don't care about the scriptures. People that are unclean. People that don't care about the word of the most high God. People that people that are not looking for God. Right. So this is why we say don't go chasing. people. It don't make sense for me to stand out on Las Vegas Boulevard when people are trying to get drunk and they're trying to hit the casino in the strip club. And I'm sitting here on Las Vegas Boulevard holding up a sign saying, take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come give your life over to Jesus Christ. And I'm stopping, bro. I'm stopping them when they walk in. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? He died on the cross for your sins, brother. 
Did you know that, brother? Hey, hey, brother, put down that drink, brother. Let me tell you something, brother. The Lord is enough of a drink for you. I'm drunk on Jesus Christ right now, brother. You don't even need to do that, brother. Come with me and come to my church. Right? And that's how they do when they do this all day. And they think in their mind, oh, I'm doing a good thing for God. But in reality, what are they doing? Yeah. They're casting their pearls to swine. There's a bunch of people out there that all I want to do tonight, I've wait, look, I've been working long shifts, long shifts at work, 12-hour shifts, overtime, just to make ends meet. I got a little bit of extra money. And all I want to do tonight, I've been looking forward to this thing for a whole month. I ain't got to work in the morning. I want to do one thing tonight. And you know what it is? Get wasted. And I want to walk down the strip. And I want to talk to girls. And I want to do all the things that I should never even speak about to another human being. Right? But you guess what the last thing I want to do when I'm out there? Is hear somebody talk to me about Jesus Christ's brother. Right? I don't care. That's not what I'm out here for. There's a church by my house on Sunday. If I want to hear about Jesus Christ's brother, then I'll go to that church. Right? So at that point, if that's a person's mindset, then guess what? You're casting it before swine. When we talk to people about the Most High God, it should be under a couple conditions. Two of those conditions, might be more, but two of those conditions that come to my mind right now, it's going to be if they ask a question, it don't matter who you are, right? If you ask a question and you're curious, guess what that means? You're looking for God. Right? Hey, brother, uh, I know you could be drunk. Well, I, I noticed that you're not drinking. Everybody else out here drinking. Why? Why don't you drink? All right, now I can talk to you about God. Well, I serve the Most High God. Most High God say I shouldn't get drunk. Is that right? Why is that? Well, you know what I'm saying? It taints our soul. We won't make it into the kingdom like that. Me, I want to live forever. That's what the books say. Man, I ain't never heard nobody teach it like that. All right, well, if you want to hear some more, you serve her up, you come talk to me. That's how the interaction is supposed to go. But if that same man look at me not drinking and say, he's a dodo for not drinking, I'm over here having fun, and then finish his drink, that's cool for him. Let him do what he's doing. But that has zero to do with me, and I'm not about to trace you down talking to you about no Jesus Christ. That's crazy to me. Because the man sitting here and he told us, don't put it in for y'all ain't never going to hear me chasing nobody. Please, please believe in the Bible. It's the right thing. Why? That don't make sense. How bad are you going to convince somebody to go, go, look, it's a million dollars. Anybody who go over there get a million dollars. All you got to do is walk over there. You get it. Your million ain't taken away from my. We all can get a million dollars. All we got to do is go over there, right? How much time are you going to waste trying to get big? People don't believe. There ain't a million dollars over there. You about to chase them down for the million dollars? You going to go get your million dollars? Look, whether you get your million don't got nothing to do with mine. I'm going to get my million regardless, right? It's not, it's not like if you beat me there, you get the million and I don't get it. If you get it, you still get a million. And guess what? When I get there, I still get a million. Why am I begging you? If if, if I go without you, I get a million. If I go with you, I get a million. Why would I beg TJ to come with me to get this million if he don't believe me? No, I'm going to tell like, hey, TJ, it's a million over there. If TJ say, oh, man, let's go get it. Then let's go get it. Let's go together. Get your million. I'm going to get what you're going to do with yours. You know what I'm talking about? But if TJ like, man, you always believing in that. Them scams. Well, ain't no million over there. This that another. Then guess what I'm going to say? All right. You know what I'm saying? I'll catch you later. Suit yourself. They ain't got nothing to do with me. And that's how this word is. You're not about to sit here and beg nobody for something you know is true and they don't believe it? What I'm begging you for? That's your life on the line. If you don't believe it, enjoy what you got going on. But I'm not putting the pearls before swine. Right? I'm not about to put no pearl. I, you know what you feed pigs? When you got a pig, do you know what you... Look, I went to Arkansas. and my uh my uh my dad his family they got this big old farm right and we went out there and we had breakfast we had breakfast and then go to walmart to get the eggs 
It just went out back. You know what I'm talking about? And all you hear is. And all of a sudden, they come back with a bunch of eggs like this. You know what I'm saying? And they create the best eggs I ever had in my darn life, though, right? Then after that, it's dinner time. They didn't get the chicken from Smith's. No, 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 no. You hear the same one that was. That's it. Bunch of blood on the floor and all that. They come in. That's chicken I had in my darn life. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and then you got the swine. They say, hey, boy, my here, you know what I'm saying? We got to feed the pigs. I say, feed the pigs? You go out there and eat, boy, take this thing. And they got like, like all the stuff out of the house that's like the refuse, right? You know what I'm saying? You know how you make food and then like you got oil left over. And you make food, and then you got, like, the bones left over from, from the chicken. And you got some of the stuff, you know, I've said people, some people eat, and they don't, oh, I'm full. They leave some of their plate, and then you go try to throw it away. No, 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 boy, don't throw that away. Put that near in the trough. In the trough? What's a trough? Going out there, you know what I'm saying, climbing down them stairs, and then you put it in right in there, right? You put it, and then you dump that thing in the trough. And then they take that thing and they pour it over into the pigs and them pigs go over that. So it's just a bunch of gunk, stank is nasty, a bunch of food and trash mixed together. Them things run over there and guess what them pigs do? And just eat that thing and tear that thing up, right? But that's what they eat. They nasty. You don't give nothing good to the pig. You only give everything that's not, nobody going to eat. That's what you give to the pig. Why would I take a pearl, a valuable jewel, and then put it in front of the pig? What is that pig going to do to it? He's going to eat it. He's not smart enough to know, oh, that's a pearl. That's valuable. I shouldn't eat that. I'm only supposed to eat the stuff that nobody else wants to eat. You think that's his thought process? Is? No. Whatever you put in my darn trough, that's what I'm eating. And that's what Yahweh was trying to tell us. Stop stressing yourself a lot of us do that stuff for ourselves we try to make it look like we're doing something we try to make it look like we're doing something noble hey i just i just want everybody to be saved that's cool y'all wants everybody to be saved too he said that he told us that that he wants everybody to be saved he's not chasing down those sinners i don't care what i don't care what these christians try to make y'all believe y'all is not chasing down one sinner not one Right? You got to be broken and you got to come to him. So it's okay to want everybody to be saved. You just got to respect the process. Wait for him to ask you a question. Right? Wait for him to get curious. Wait for them to look for God. Now, they at a church, they looking for God. They may not believe the same thing you looking for. They, not, they might not believe the same thing you believe. But you could at least have a conversation with somebody who go to church or somebody who looking for God or somebody who talk about God, even if they believe something different. But to try to have a conversation with somebody who ain't thinking about God, don't believe God is real. That's nuts. That don't even make sense. Right. But they mind ain't even in the right place to entertain a conversation with you. And all they don't going to do is take what you say and try to make a fool out of you. This is uh keep going. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rent you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. But what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if right. He asks, He's saying, look, if you ask for bread, what person do you know of that that's going to end up giving his son a stone? The heart come here and be like, man, look, I don't want, I don't want like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for Jordans. I'm not asking for a new phone. I'm not asking for a new game. I just want a little bread. You know what I'm saying? Just a little hungry. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, what father do you know going to look at that boy and be like, here's a couple rocks. Eat that. Right? He's saying, well, that's how the most high God is. Most high God not going to, if you ask him for something and it's good, you're not asking him for nothing stupid. You're just asking him something to nourish yourself to make sure you can move along. He said, 
You think the Most High God gonna give you something bad? Give you something worthless? Keep going. Watch this. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and him that knocks it shall be open. But what man is there of you whom his son asks bread? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you should, that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. What? So we don't be hearing what y'all should say. He just opened up his mouth and said, all things, right? All things that you want people to do to you, right? Do the same thing that you want them to do to you to them. That part's not revolution. That, that's, that's our law tell us to do that, right? That's not a big deal. The big deal is what he says next. He said, because this is the law and the prophets. In other words, he's saying, by treating people the way you want them to treat you, you've done everything that the law and the prophet said. But is that true? Right? Like the law has always said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's not new. Right? Grab, uh, grab Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 19. Or is it 18? Try 19 first. This is Leviticus chapter 19. Verse 1. Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, Yahuwah, your God, am holy. You no, nah, I think it's 18. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say to them, I am Yahuwah, your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwell, you shall not do. Mm -hmm. After the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, you shall not do. Neither mm -hmm. shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances and walk therein. I am mm -hmm. Yahuwah, your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man shall do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. None of you Keep shall going. approach, but none of you shall approach to any that is near to kin of him to uncover oh, their no. name. Uh, okay, go back to nineteen. Maybe it is nineteen. You shall be holy, for I am Yahuwah your God. Am holy. You shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my sabbaths. I am Yahuwah your God. Turn not unto idols, nor make yourselves molten gods. I am Yahuwah. And if you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto Yahuwah, you shall offer it at your own will. It shall be the same day you offer it, and on the morrow, and if aught remain unto the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. Mm -hmm. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable, it shall not be accepted. Therefore, everyone that eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the hollow thing of Yahuwah, that you shall be cut off from among his people. And that soul shall be cut off among, from among his people. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of thy harvest. You Why can't you reap the, the corners of your field? When it say reap, what is it talking about? Gather all of it. And trying to just cutting up the cutting up the, the, the farmland, right? So you got all this farmland, and then when it's time, you got everything growing on it. Let's say what you got in your farmlands, guy. You don't know what you got in your farmlands are. You got some corn. What you got in your farmland? Corn. Everybody got corn. What you got in your farmland? Tomato. Okay, you got some tomatoes. You got apples. You got apples in your farmland, huh? So he got a farmland full of apple trees. You got eggplants. Cherries. Okay. All right. So look, y'all got all this stuff, right? So what you do is you go out there and you say. I'm going to get all my apples, right? I'm going to go ahead. So I'm, I'm picking them out of a the tree, right? I'm gathering all my darn apples, right? And then you got, you said you wanted, what do you have? Corn, right? So y'all got the corn and you getting out there and you pulling all the corn off of the stocks and then putting them up and you bundle them up, right? And bag them. The book say we can't just clean out our whole field. We got to leave some stuff on there, leave some stuff around the edges, 
right? Like I get the middle, but around the edges. You know why the edges? Mm -mm. Because Zakai, who doesn't have his own field, he might be walking past and he might be hungry when he walks past and he don't have his own field. So our, we were told to kind of leave a little bit along the edges so that when people are walking by our field, guess what they could do? I'll just take a piece of corn. Right? When they when they walking past his apple trees, his field of apple trees. Just, you know. <sighs> right? The bananas. He grabbed and be like, bananas on trees too, right? Like, whoosh. Right? So you get them, and now because it's along the edges, people can take it. That's the compassion that Yah required for our people, for our neighbors, right? For people that was around us, we had to make sure we leave some food just in case they wanted to have some food. Is he stink? Oh, I was about to say. I was about to get him for you, man. I was about to get All you got to say is get him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I had to check with Mel. I had to make sure. I had to make sure. I'm like, y'all mighty close with somebody there. You know what I mean? That's rough. That's torture. You just got to sit there and take that thing. You know how you take the half breath? I'm not taking You know what I'm saying? Mess around. Suffocate yourself. You got carbon monoxide poisoning trying to, you know what I'm saying? So listen, our law required us to be compassionate to our people, right? So that's that's loving your neighbor as yourself right there. Keep going. Watch this. You shall not glean thy vineyard, neither shall you gather every grape of thy vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am Yahuwah your God. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall you profane the name of thy God. I am Yahuwah. Right? So it told you, man, look, don't lie to one another. Don't steal one another. Don't deal falsely with one another. In other words, don't be trying to trick and take advantage of one another. All of that is loving your neighbor as yourself. Our law told us this. Y'all wish you wouldn't tell us nothing new with, with hey, treat, treat the person that you want to, treat them the way you want to be treated is pretty much what he just said, right? But the next thing he said, this is the law and the prophets, as if that's everything that the law and the prophets taught. But it's not. Keep going. Watch this. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night into the morning. You shall not. Right. If I tell you I'm going to pay you on Wednesday, he said, don't try to hold on to the, the money all Wednesday. I'm supposed to be. Look, man, I'm supposed to pay you on Wednesday. It's supposed to be Wednesday that I pay you. It's Wednesday. You at my door in the morning looking for it. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I got it to you tonight. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Let our book said we can't do that. If I tell you I'm going to pay you, don't wait all day to the end of the day and be like, oh, oh, you still looking for that? Oh, I got you. Here you go. It's nighttime. Everybody about to go to sleep. No, you told me Wednesday. Get it to me in the morning. That's what our books say. Right? Keep going. Watch this. You shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear mm -hmm. you. Fear thy God. I am Yahuwah. You right? If somebody deaf, somebody blind, you ain't supposed to be messing with them, making their life harder. Right? That's it. That's what that's what our books say. You got a handicapped person, somebody that's dealing with some stuff. You're not supposed to make their life harder. That's against our book. That's against our law. Right. Keep going. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. You shall not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness, you shall judge thy neighbor. Right. All this is loving your neighbor as yourself. Right. He, he's telling us how to do it. Watch this. Keep going. You shall not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Right? But don't hate your, your, your brother in your heart and don't, don't suffer sin upon your neighbor. Watch this. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahuwah. Right? So he tells you right there at the end of it, love your neighbor as yourself that's the summation of everything that he was just teaching us he was just giving us commandments that demonstrate you loving your neighbor as yourself then he tell you don't you hate your brother in your heart and matter of fact don't suffer sin on your brother matter of fact don't even try to avenge yourself against your brother you shall love your neighbor as yourself 
Keep going. Watch this. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let the cattle gender with diverse kind. You shall not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither now, what does that have to do with loving your neighbor as yourself? Probably ruin your neighbor's field. <laughs> he said, this is your own field. Right? Do not sow diverse seed. Read it again. Watch this. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. Now, what does the clothes I wear have to do with my neighbor? If I put on clothes that's mixed with silk and mixed with, let's see, you know what I'm saying, silk and wool, right? And I, I pull the both of them together and weld them together and all that, right? And I got this weird looking shirt. What does that have to do with my neighbor? It's my shirt. I put it on myself. What does that have to do with the neighbor? Nothing, right? Keep going. Watch this. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, betrothed to a husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yahuwah, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. The priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before Yahuwah for his sin which he had done, and the sin which he has done shall be forgiven him. And when ye shall come into the land, ye shall have planted all manner of trees for food. Then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten up. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise Yahuwah with all. And in the fifth year, ye shall eat of the fruit thereof, that is, that it may yield unto you in the increase thereof. I am Yahuwah, your God. You all right, so there goes T.J. Tree. So T.J. T.J. Apple Tree, when he, when he came into the land, right? So when, look, when Joshua brought T.J. into the land, he, Joshua told him, Joshua was like, okay, T.J., this is your land over there. That's your territory. What tribe are you from? Seven. 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 No. Seven. Y'all don't know. Y'all can't give me one tribe, one Hebrew tribe. The Jeez, we in bad shape over here. Bad shape. Mel, you ain't got one Hebrew tribe for me? Everybody ain't been telling them this their whole life. A what? The sons of Israel that y'all read just a couple a couple months ago. Eli. Oh yeah, we in bad shape. Alea. All right, listen, listen. So let's just say I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Let's just say TJ is from Issachar, right? So TJ from Issachar. And Joshua's like, mm, that's your land over there. And then TJ is like, ooh, I'm so happy to get in my land. And TJ ain't even got to fight to get in his land. His land already clear. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't even got to fight nobody to get in his land. The rest of the tribes over there are scrapping. They getting down, trying to beat up the Canaanites. Some of them getting whooped out. TJ walked right into his land. And guess what's sitting there? Right in the middle of his territory. A big old apple tree. Right? TJ look at that apple tree. And he say, and it already got fruit on it. And TJ go over there. You know, TJ, you know what I'm saying? He got a little length on him. So he go up there and he reach on that thing. Uh, uh, he on his toes still, though. Uh, and then he grabbed that apple off of that thing. And then the priest walked by him. He see it. And then guess what the priest say? What do you think the priest say? The priest say, what your butt darn doing, boy? You better not eat that darn apple off that tree. TJ going to look back and be like, it's a good apple tree. Why I can't eat it? The priest going to open up the book and read this to him. Read it right now. And in the fifth year, wait, but in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be whole. Now, back one more. And when you shall come into the land, you shall have planted all manner of cheese for food. And then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you. How many years? Three. Priest going to look at him and be like, have it been three years? Boy, it barely been three darn minutes. 
right? He's going to tell them, it ain't been three years. Boy, you got to sit your butt down, right? He's going to tell them, three years, it got to be considered uncircumcised. That means it's unclean. It's not fit. And in the fourth year, what's going to happen? In the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise Yahuwah with all. Right? So everything that come on that tree in the fourth year got to be given to the priest. So the priest standing there looking at you still, he's going to come back three years later. It's the fourth year. TJ like, ah, okay, I can finally eat my apple tree. Priest going to be like, what are you going to say? Hey, hey, get your butt off of that darn tree. He's going to be like, I still got to wait another year. And the priest going to look at him and be like, book say now it come to me. So TJ got to pick everything off of the darn tree, right? Put it inside of the basket. And he's carrying it like this <sighs> over to the priest. Right, right. And then the priest going to look at it. Look, the priest going to look at him and be like, no, nah, go ahead. Go take it over there. You know what I'm saying? Take it to my darn wagon, boy. And then he's going to be looking at him like, yeah, yeah. And then he's going to put that thing in the wagon, bow all them apples. And the priest going to drive off happy, too. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'll be back next year. You know what I'm saying? Then the following year, now TJ can reach up there and get his tree. But guess what? That year ain't no fruit come off of the tree. You know what I'm talking about? So TJ, man, he got to wait till six years for it to get ripe again so he can eat his apples. But after that, he can have his apples. Right? That's our law. Right? That's how much you got in the law because you'll mess around and you think it ain't nothing wrong with it. Do you think if you grab an apple and eat it, is that offending your neighbor? It's my darn apple tree. It's my darn tree. How is that offending? What that got to do with me loving my neighbor? I just want an apple. But guess what? That's our law. You can't eat it for three years. The first, the first people that came into the land, rather. The first people that came into the land and planted their tree, or the first people that came into the land and they saw a tree, you couldn't eat it for three years. You have to let everything grow of itself, fall by itself. Everything going to happen by itself. And then the fourth year, everything had to go to God. And then the fifth year, it's all you. You can eat whatever you want. Excuse me. Eat whatever you want in the fifth year. Because that's our law. It was considered uncircumcised. Matter of fact, if you even take that, there is a law for circumcision. What do you think that got to do with your neighbor? Grab, uh, grab uh, Joshua. Matter of fact, before we grab Joshua, grab Genesis chapter 17. This is Genesis chapter 17. Give me verse 9. This is Genesis chapter 17, verse 9. What the book say? Y'all have to, I'm only taking y'all through this because when you understand the law, you would understand how ridiculous it would sound to people for somebody to say, oh, just treat people the way you want to be treated. And by doing that, you've done everything in the law and everything in the prophets. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a lot of stuff in our law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of particular stuff in our law that don't have nothing to do with how I treat another person that if I don't do it, it's a sin for me. So how can this man come later and tell me, oh, just treat people the way you want to be treated? By doing that, you've done the law and the prophets. That's crazy, right? This is why some people on one side look at him like, man, he teach like he got authority. Because you would have to have authority to disannul everything that Moses just said. Because that's how it sounds. It sounds like what Yahushua was saying is like, yo, just do this. And we'll call it good. But Moses was like, no, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do that. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to do this. Moses gave us a whole list of things we got to do. Y'all, she was like, look, 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 just treat people. It's like he giving us a deal. You know what I'm saying? He giving us a half off deal. You know what I'm saying? Walmart, Walmart got the smiley face. That means they got rolled back. That means you get a percentage off. Right? He giving us the clearance version of the law. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just do, just do this piece of it. You know what I'm saying? And we'll call it good. And that's why people struggle. Because that is what it sounds like he's saying. What do you mean? Just treat people the way you want to be treated and that's the law. No, it's not. I've read the law. Right? This is uh, Genesis chapter uh, uh, 17, verse 9. What does the book say? And God said unto Abraham, You shall keep my covenant, therefore, you and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is the covenant which you shall keep between me mm -hmm. and you and your seed after you. Every mm -hmm. man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be 
a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is brought with money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh on. Or shall be where? Covenant. In the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised. That who's the flesh be... of his foreskin is not circumcised. He's not talking about the circumcision of no heart. He ain't talking about no spiritual circumcision. He ain't talking about no metaphorical circumcision. He's telling you very specifically the foreskin of his member. We ain't got to get too detailed. It's a lady in the room. You know what I'm talking about? But that thing is, that thing is painful what he thought. He's talking about real stuff that's going to cause a lot of blood to come out, right? And you got to heal from that thing. This is something that, this is a sacrifice that a man got to make, right? He's telling you everybody has to be circumcised if you want to share in this covenant. And it got to be the foreskin of your member. Watch this. Keep going. Keep being confused. I'll tell you about it. Oh, yeah, got circumcised. Oh, that was a rough time. That was a rough time. Y'all little brother got circumcised. No, never. You know what I'm saying? Y'all little brother got circumcised. Y'all, y'all mom was texting me. She was like, yeah, I was crying. It's a, it's a rough thing. It's a rough thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I go. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. What you got? And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. That soul shall be what? Cut off from his people. So if you are not circumcised, right? If you are not circumcised, you will be cut off from your people. That's what our law say, right? Our law says if you are not circumcised, you will be cut off from your people. What does that have to do with loving your neighbor as yourself? Right? Nevertheless, guess what Joshua had to do? Guess what Moses had to do? Right? Moses, when Moses, Most High God gave Moses the whole plan of what he going to say to Pharaoh and how he going to set the people free and all that. He on his way to go do it. Moses, Moses almost got struck dead by the Most High God because he didn't circumcise his kids. It wasn't until his wife circumcised his kids that Moses was able to live. Right? Before that, I mean, after that, we were going into the land. Moses is dead at this point. Joshua took over. He's leading us into the land. We about to go right to the land so we can give TJ his territory, give Zahar his territory, give everybody their territory, right? Then after that, Joshua was like, oh, before we go in there, all y'all line up. I have to cut the foreskins of your members. Give me a sleek look. Right? So he sliced him all up. All of them. All of them got sliced up, right? They had to sit there, heal. Then they went in and they went to go fight. Right? They had to do that before coming into the land. Right? That's what happens. So this is not something that, that was just like, oh, it's not a big deal. No, this is something that the Most High God required of our people. However, y'all, she would say, Listen, just treat people the way you want to be treated. That's the law and the prophets. I'm telling y'all this because I want y'all to think about it how most people would be thinking about when they hear that. That sounds ridiculous. That sounds crazy. That sounds nuts. And it sounds like you don't know the scriptures when you get to talking like that. But then for some people, it sounds revolutionary. It sounds like this guy knows what he's talking about. It sounds like he teaches. He teaches as if. If he has the authority to say something like. This. Like what if he has the authority to just say that and that be the fact that be the law. What if he is. You know what? What if he's in Deuteronomy chapter 18? This is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse 15. Right? Some people stand around looking like, what if, just what if, what if Moses told us about this guy before? Right? We all say we got to listen to Moses and we got to do whatever Moses say. Everybody would agree with that. What Moses said 
is the commandment. That's what has to go. But what if Moses told us something that we might have missed? This is Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse 15. Yahuwah thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from, a, from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. Right? He said it's going to be a prophet. It's Moses talking. Look, Yahuwah thy God is going to raise up a, a prophet just like Moses. Right? And when he get to talking, he said, that's who you're going to listen to. He's going, watch this. Unto him ye shall hearken. According mm -hmm. to all that you desired of Yahuwah thy God in Horeb, the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear the voice of Yahuwah my God, neither let me see his great fire anymore, that I die not. Yahuwah said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto you, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will. He said, him. whoever don't listen to what he say, he's going to require it of him. So now that changes things. That means that our law is commanding us to listen to this prophet that's going to come in the future. And what this prophet says at that time will be required. So while one person may look at it like, man, he's saying something different from Moses. Another person might look at it and be like, oh, this is the person Moses told us would come and say something different. And when he say something different, we got to listen to him. And that is the law. That's why Yahushua told us in the fifth chapter of John that if you believed Moses, you would believe me because Moses spoke of him. Right. That's what it all came down to. It all came down to Yahushua coming along and fulfilling what Moses said. That's why he says, I did not come to destroy in the law and the prophets just to fulfill it. So in the same way, he's saying the same thing right here. He's saying, listen. If you treat your neighbor as yourself, well, then that is the law and the prophets. Because he knows that he's going to keep all of the law. He's not going to sin at all. Right. And then he's going to die to capture the authority. Right. Because he paid for the penalty of death, although he didn't deserve it. And at that point, once he has that authority, now he can resurrect whoever he wants from death. So that's why he's telling us, listen, these are new terms. If you treat people the way you want to be treated, you have fulfilled the law and the prophets because I am going to resurrect you from death and make you like me. Right. At this point, he's not giving us a full explanation. He's just dropping little, little hints in what he's talking about. Right. But I'm explaining to y'all what he's what he's about to explain even more and what the prophets and the apostles are going to explain later. Right. He's trying to drop it on us like, look, this is the law and the prophets. Just treat your neighbor as yourself. Literally, when we read it, that's not the law and the prophet. The law and the prophet tell us a whole lot more when we read it literally. Right. But prophetically, exactly what he's talking about. Right. Because that's what Moses told us in the, in the 18th chapter. Keep going. Watch this. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Oh, sorry. Go uh, jump on back to uh, Matthew, wherever we left off in Matthew. Where we leave off? Uh, verse 13. It's Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse what, 13 you say? Yeah. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Watch what the book say. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Mm. Enter ye in at the straight gate. What straight gate mean? Uh, narrow a gate, gate where no gay people is that too what the straight what the straight gate mean difficult <laughs> straight means difficult narrow right straight when they say straight here it's talking about something difficult so enter in at the difficult gate the gate that's hard to get into right Go ahead. Keep going. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. 
because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few there be that find it. So he's telling us only a few people is going to make it into the kingdom. That's the message that he's giving us. It's not going to be everybody. It's only going to be a few people that make it into the kingdom. And so now you have to make the decision to say, I'm going to go to difficult path that I know only a few people going to get into, or I'm going to go to easy path and I'm going to take my butt right to hell. Right? That's a decision that everybody got to make. But when you're making that decision, you're not really making the decision of, hmm, I'm going to hell or I'm going to go into the kingdom. Right? That's not the decision that you think you're making. You are making that decision. But when we live in our everyday lives, we don't think we're making that decision. You know what decision we think we're making? Man, it ain't that big of a deal. I'm just trying to have a little fun tonight. Right? I'm just having a little fun. Man, I always, I always have to do the right thing. Everybody always be on me about doing the right thing. I see all these other people out there messing up, doing all this stuff. They never get in trouble. They get to have all this fun. You know what I'm going to do? Forget it. Tonight, I'm going to have fun like this. Right? In our mind, that's the decision that we're making. we making the decision of, man, this is what I feel like doing tonight versus what I don't feel like doing. But behind that thought process, what you're really doing is you're saying, oh, okay, I'm going to the straight gate versus I'm going the broad way, the easy way, the way that everybody be going. Our mindset, because only a few people is going to make it the hard way, right? There's only going to be a few, right? Our mindset got to be out of all these billions of people that's in the world, I'm going to be one of them few, right? Whatever it takes, a lot of people out there. I'm going to be one of the few, however many it is that's going to make it into the gates. I'm going to be one of them. And the only way, y'all stop playing, just focus, sit down. It's all right, y'all relax. It's all right, sit down. You moving around, crawling, flipping all over on the couch, trying to figure out what's going on. Just sit down, it's good, you know what I mean? Sit down, sit up, sit up. Put your back on the back of the couch like it's supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? That's what it's there for. Looking like darn Spider-Man. Not Spider-Man, Spidey Man. You know what I'm saying? What do you look like? Goodness gracious. Um, but but that's the mindset, right? Your mindset gotta be, I'm gonna, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard, right? I was talking to I was talking, I was talking to a brother, and the brother was telling me just how difficult it was dealing with dealing with his family members. He's like, oh man, it's hard dealing with family members. It's hard. I got to wake up and I got to deal with them every single day. And don't none of them believe what he believed. Right? His wife didn't, didn't transition with him. You know what I'm saying? He trying to, he trying to get on the stuff that we, we learned about and we teach. Right? But his wife is still in the Christian land. And she want to raise the kids in Christian land. Right? So they fight about holidays. They fight about wearing crosses and, and, and having certain things in the house and all they fight over all that stuff right he's just like man it's tearing me down every day to deal with this stuff because i love my wife i don't want to leave her i was like no it ain't what you're supposed to do anyway right you got to maintain and you got to do what you need to do but it's so hard he said and it gets depressing and i feel so alone even though i'm surrounded by my whole family and all this stuff sad stuff but guess what? At the end of the day, guess what he got to do? Get your butt up and deal with it. There's no release. There's no secret. There's no, no shortcut. There's no side route. You can't climb through the window. You got to walk right through the difficult path. It's going to be hard. And you always going to be looking at somebody else's life and be like, see, it's easy for Brother Phil. Or it's easy for Brother T. Or it's easy for this person or that person. In reality, maybe it is. Maybe it's simple for Brother Phil. And maybe it's simple for Brother T. Guess what? That don't change nothing about your situation. Your situation is you got to deal with whatever's in front of you. You got to overcome it. And you got to serve the Most High God. And you got to do it for the rest of your life. So now you can sit here and you can look around at everybody else and be like, I feel like it's easier when you really don't know. You have no idea what, how it is for anybody else, right? You can sit around and, and focus your mind on that, or you can focus your mind on, hey, how do I make this work? I got to get up and I got to go. Ain't going to be no relief. The only relief that you're going to get is going to come from the most high God. 
I can't give you relief. I can't give you a secret. I can't give you no no side route. The only path there is is the difficult path. Right? And if you serve the most, that's your dad. You know what I'm saying? That boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm Goodness gracious. That boy. Hey, take it easy. Take what's, it what's going on? Let me see what's going on in here. Oh, Sister Pam got some questions. Uh, do we fall along the prophet? Is it simple uh, treating people how you want to be treated? Right? We'll we'll get to your question, Sister Pam. Um, but ultimately, just a quick version of it, we follow the law and the prophets because the law, Moses told us in the law, say do whatever Yahweh Shua say. So that's always the answer. We do whatever Yahweh Shua say, and Yahweh Shua just told us treat our neighbors as ourselves, and that is the law and the prophets. And Yahweh Shua stand by Moses. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing with that. Listen, if Moses stamp you, you can't do nothing with it. What happened when Moses st stamped Joshua? Everybody listened to him and did what Everybody he listened to him. That is what happens when Moses stamp. When Moses stamp you, everybody got to listen to you. Moses stamped Yahweh Shua. That's why Yahweh Shua told you, you don't believe Moses. That's why you don't believe him. That's why these people struggle with Yahweh Shua. Because they don't believe what Moses said. It's hard. They be looking like, oh, man, I feel like we're not doing what Moses say. No, Moses told you this is what you got to do. When this man come, whatever he say, you think, Mo everybody thinking like, oh, whatever Moses say, that's what's going to be required of you. When Moses is telling you, no, nah, when he come, that's what's required of you. Whatever he say is required of you, right? That's the part that, that people don't get. That's the part that people struggle with, right? But that's all right. It's early in the gospel still, right? We're going we gonna to walk through it real slow, right? Real slow. And every time these moments come up, we're going to bring them up and we're going to talk about them. And you're going to see more and more is going to be revealed each time, right? More and more. Because remember, we can't, we can't read what we read today and forgot what we read a couple weeks ago. What we read a couple weeks ago was exactly the same same message, exact same message. Yahushua said, right? Or not even, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yahushua said, um... Uh, he said, uh, I didn't come to do away with the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. He said, not one jot or one tittle going to be passed away from the, from the law until heaven and earth pass. Then he said, if a man break even the least of these commandments and teach people to do so. So not just break the commandments, but also teach people to break the commandments. He said he will be least in the kingdom. That is the same message that he's saying right now where he say, eh. All you got to do is love your neighbor as yourself. That's the law and the prophets. When we know there's a whole lot of other laws that don't have anything to do with treating people the way you want to be treated. Right? However, if you do that, you will be in the kingdom. It's the exact same message. He's telling you, if you listen to me, you can get into the kingdom. Whatever I say is required of you. Now, if you want to be great in the kingdom, he also told you any man who does the law and the commandments and teaches people to do so will be great in the kingdom. Right. He's teaching us how to get into the kingdom. He's not teaching us what Moses taught us. It's two separate things. Two separate things. That's what we talked about a couple weeks ago. Right. We got to we got to retain this stuff and hold on to it because this is where our salvation is. This is where Satan going to try to attack. This is the most important topic. Right. What is required to be saved? That is the most important topic. And that's why there's so much confusion around it. Right. What's required to be saved? The answer is what did Moses say? He said the prophet that comes that's going to be like him. Most high God is going to put words in his mouth and whoever don't listen to him, it will be required of. So what's required to be saved? Whatever Yahushua said. And Yahushua said in the fifth chapter of uh, Matthew, he told so, us, if you are break these commandments, talking about the law of Moses, and teach people to do it, break, break the least of these commandments and teach people to do it, right? You will be least in the kingdom. You still get in the kingdom, even if you break some of the least of the commandments. But if you so, teach people to do the commandments and do them, you will be great in the kingdom. Go ahead, brother. 
you could say Moses said whatever that whatever this prophet shall speak in God's name that is the standard but sometimes people are like I don't know if they that's the that. standard for the kingdom exactly so I think right that's the standard like, to get inside the kingdom when you say which is different from what Moses was teaching Moses was teaching a standard of righteousness right but once we offend Moses we are cursed there's no way to reach that standard except you have Yahushua who will eventually die, right? What, what he already has, but in what we're reading, he's we're reading how he's about to die for our sins. Therefore, he meets the standard. He takes a penalty he doesn't deserve. Now he has authority to grant anybody he wants to have that, that, that standard, but he doesn't want anybody to have that standard unless they do what he says. That's it. Keep going, sorry. So when we say that's what's going to be required of you, a lot of times that's when like people get lost. Like, what are you talking about? So it's like if you replace the word with required of you with standard. So Moses is saying, God's going to raise up a prophet like me. Whatever he says is the standard. He said that. So Yahushua is the standard, right? Moses is like extra credit on top of the standard. Because like everyone always asks, like, okay, well, which one do we do? Like, well, you you can do both, but what but what what Yahushua says is what's gonna get you saved. Yep. When you ask, when that question comes, which one do you do? You gotta ask people, well, what do you want? You want to get into the kingdom? You do what Yahushua say. You want to be great in the kingdom? Then you do what Yahushua say, and you do what Moses say. Right. You want the promises that come with the with the law, then you only do what Moses say. But then don't expect to get no kingdom. The kingdom don't come with the with the law. Right. The promises that come with the law, you know, you live long days, just that another. And it's a package deal. So you got to get everybody to do it. Right. It ain't just a one off. Some of the promises are one offs. You know what I'm saying? But most of it is a package deal and it's tied to our land. So you got to get everybody to do it for us to get back in the land. You want to get into the kingdom and be great, you do what Yahushua will say, and you keep the law and teach the law. That equals greatness in the kingdom. Right? That is the only way. The rest of this stuff is, as Joe Biden says, malarkey. You know what I'm talking about? The rest of this stuff is malarkey. <laughs> the idea that someone can't get in the kingdom just because they eat pork. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. The idea, <laughs> the idea that this man says. Let's keep going. This is uh, what verse we on? Uh, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Mm -hmm. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings forth good fruit is hewn down, and every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the I want you all to understand that part, because it ties into how this chapter began. The beginning of this chapter talked about judge not lest you be judged. Then it goes on to teach you that first you got to clear out your own eyes so that you can judge properly. Right. That's a different type of judgment than what we're talking about here. A lot of people, when they say judge not lest you be judged, they're actually talking about the judgment that Yahushua was talking about right here. He says every tree bears fruit. So in other words, you know what type of tree you're dealing with. Based off of what? The fruit that come from that tree. When, when we looking at TJ's apple tree, we know it's an apple tree. How? There's apples that come from the tree. Matter of fact, it's not even just the apples. Let's say the apples haven't grown yet because they're not in season. There are particular leaves that come from an apple tree, even when there's no apple, apples. Right? Somebody who's very familiar with apple trees, 
They don't need to see an apple on that tree to know it's an apple tree. They're looking at the shape of the tree, the way the branches come out, the leaves on that tree. They'll say, that's an apple tree. Even if they don't have one apple on that tree yet because they haven't grown, they're not in season yet. Right? The way that a tree grows and the fruit that comes off of that tree tells you what type of tree it is. Everybody going to know. Oh, that's a fig tree. That's an apple tree. That's a banana tree. Bananas come from trees? Or yeah, vines? Yeah. Tree. Trees? That's a banana tree. That's a that tree. That's a that tree. No matter what, that tree, right, is going to show what type of tree it is by its fruits. So Yah is telling us this is a different type of judge. He's telling us to make an assessment based on the people that we see and that we deal with. You look at what is being produced by these people. And if what is being produced by these people is unrighteousness, then guess what? That is an unrighteous person. That's how you have to reckon it in your mind. Get your feet out of his face. Y'all sit up. That's how you have to reckon it in your mind. You have to reckon it and say, okay, that was unrighteous. That's an unrighteous person. Let me treat this person as an unrighteous person. That means I ain't supposed to be learning from them. I ain't supposed to be hanging out with them. I ain't supposed to do whatever, right? That person goes in the unrighteous category. Now, we got to deal with unrighteous people all our life, right? It's just we in the unrighteous world. That's how I go, right? But you mark those individuals and you have a special place for them, right? I know that this is an unrighteous person. When I'm trying to seek righteousness, when I'm trying to seek the truth, when I need righteous counsel, when I need somebody, listen, if an unrighteous person is really good at basketball, right? Ain't nothing wrong with learning basketball from that person. That's how it go. But I'm not then going to the basketball person and say, teach me about God. That wouldn't make sense. Right? And that's how we have to view it. Right? Yahushua was telling us, listen, just believe what they show on their tree. Now, what if a person like they do like one unrighteous thing, but everything they else, everything else they do is good? What kind of tree are they in? They just do. They be doing like they be cussing sometimes, just here and there. You know what I'm saying? Just like, like sometimes they be cussing, right? But they be feeding the hungry people, giving to the poor. You know what I'm saying? They so generous and nice. What kind of tree, tree is that? Unrighteous. Right? What if they do a whole bunch of unrighteous stuff, but they do, they always talking about God. So hold on. You mean to tell me I can do one unrighteous thing and do everything else good and be an unrighteous tree. But if I do one good thing and do everything else unrighteous, I'm still an unrighteous tree. No matter what, if I got any unrighteousness, you can tell me I'm an unrighteous tree. That's exactly how it works. That's exactly how it works. Right? Because you know something wrong if you see a darn orange popping off of an apple tree. There's something wrong with that tree. You can't trust that tree. And you know why? Because that's why Yah told us in our law don't sow fields with mingled seed. You be one way. That's our law. And that's what Yahushua, I mean, that's what Yahushua is trying to tell us right now. You're not about to see two different fruit. If you see two different fruit from a tree, then stay away from that darn tree. That's a ming, that's against our law. That's a tree with mingled seed. Right? When we serve the most high God, we got to get all that stuff up out of us. And until we do, we should see ourselves as unrighteous trees. Until we get all that stuff up out of us. Every bit of it. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. I'm an unrighteous tree. Right? But once we get it all out of us, well, now we're producing good fruit. Now we serve in the most high God. When we're looking for leaders, when we're look, looking for teachers, we're looking for people. If they're doing stuff and you look at the book like, no, I thought the books, they don't do that. Right? Unrighteous tree. That has to be our mindset. Otherwise, you'll mess around falling because a lot of people, they make, you know, they make, you know what I'm saying? They just, they kind of cut corners a little bit. Be like, oh, well, ain't nobody completely righteous. Hmm? That's your first mistake. 
when we trust God, even if you haven't found nobody that's completely righteous, right? Nobody that's holding it straight and narrow. Nobody that's not cussing, not lying, not cheating on their wife, not doing nothing. Guess what you're supposed to do? Sit your butt down. Read the Bible to yourself until the Most High God sends you somebody. Don't compromise. Trust the Most High God. Just trust him. Somebody going to send. You're going to pop on YouTube. You're going to see Brother Phil. And if it ain't Brother Phil, it's going to be the next guy. Most High God, take me away. It's going to be the next one eventually. I'm not nothing. The brothers, the other brothers that's teaching the truth ain't nothing. It's only the most high God. All of us are replaceable. He'll move me out the way, put another one right here. You know what I'm saying? I'll move up. I'll go away. You know what I'm saying? God forbid I'll die, whatever. Tasha then will move into a different house. And guess what? The most high God's so bad, he'll bring another brother right here in my house, set up Bible study right back in my house and start doing exactly like I was doing. Same place, same everything. That's how bad the most high God, like the most high God will make this thing happen however he want to do it. He'll raise somebody up in darn Louisiana if he want to. Preaching the word with a thick accent. Everybody think he dumb. I tell you, most high God, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He'll thick southern accent. Right? That's how this thing works. Keep going. Watch this. Right. When our priest, right, if you think about our priest, our priest, if somebody if somebody's skin started to turn white in one spot, what would happen? A leopard. Book would call him lepers. The priest got to come check him out, huh? Oh, hold on real quick. Go to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 13. I just want you all to see. I want you all to see that this whole time we've been taught. To judge things based off of what we see. Do not let these people lie to you. They'd be like, oh, well, my, my Christian church used to say, it ain't what it looked like. You know what I'm saying? It ain't what it looked like. Whole time, most of our God is telling you, go based off of what, it's look, what it looked like now. When it comes to people behaving. Right? First thing you go off of is what did y'all say? Second thing you go off of is despite what y'all say, Right? Always trust. I mean, despite what it looked like, always trust what y'all say. Right. So right now, y'all is saying, look at people's behavior. So we can't de deviate from that. That's the word. And that's exactly how the priests were. Right. They looked at what what was produced from a person. And that's how they made their judgment. This is Leviticus chapter uh, 13, verse one. What's the Sharon say about my lambs? Yeah, I appreciate you, Sister Danielle. Tastes too wild and gamey for me. Yeah, lamb tastes like it ran and jumped on the plate. <laughs> this is uh this is uh, Leviticus chapter 13, verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in his skin of his flesh a rising, a scab or a bright spot, and it be the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy. And he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest and unto one of his sons the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague and the skin of the flesh. And when the hair of the plague is turned white, and when the plague is in sight deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, the sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that he hath a plague seven days. Right. So he look at it and the, the priest got to examine him like, OK, your skin turned white and the hair on your skin turned white. It went from black to white. Your skin went from black to white. The hair on your skin went from black to white. OK, that looked like it's leprosy. Go ahead and get locked up for a couple of days. We're going you know what I'm saying we're going to try to figure this out. So they they isolate them for seven days. Y'all right? remember COVID? Yeah, if you if you tested po positive for COVID, what happened? For how many days? Where do you think they got that from? Watch this. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in the sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that he has the plague seven days. 
And the priest shall look on him on the seventh day, and behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. And How many days now? Seven days more. That's 14 days. Right? That's where they got this from. Jump on down. Go down to, uh, uh, let's see. Give me, what's the last verse of 13? Let me tell you, they all the wisdom they got, you know, you know, they came out with saying they ain't even had no real science behind the 14 days and 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 the mask and all that stuff. It's like they didn't do no real studies from it. They just came up with it. All the stuff that they get, they get from our book. Watch this. All the good stuff. Right. Uh, what's the last verse? Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Give me like forty one. And he that has his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, his forehead, his forehead bald. bald. <laughs> now back up before that. I'm looking for the uh the covering of the upper lip. Mm -hmm. Is it like 39? It shouldn't be too much before that, I don't think. Y'all come back over here. Come over here and sit down. Y'all stop. What's wrong with y'all? Yeah, why they following you? <laughs> this is uh you see it it's not like verse 38 39 mm -hmm. is it past the forehead ball see if it's uh See if it's 50, 51. It can't be that far down. It's in there somewhere. Let me see if I can cheat real quick. It's 45. It's Leviticus chapter 13. Uh, maybe it ain't 45. Let me see. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45. Watch this. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be ripped and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry, unclean, unclean. Look, he got to put a covering upon his upper lip and he shall cry what? Unclean, unclean. That's the mask. You know what I'm saying? He had the mask up and he had to be quarantined for 14 days. Right? They get this stuff from our book. These people will tell you out their own mouth. They didn't start washing their dirty selves. They didn't start washing their hands before the doctors did the operations. They didn't start washing their hands until they, until they looked at the book and they was looking like, you know, those priests, they used to wash a lot. Maybe we start washing their hands. So then they start washing their own hands and then people stop dying on the operation table getting nasty, darn nasty hands reaching inside of somebody. They had cut somebody open, reach in there with their bare nasty hands and get nasty infections all over them. You know why? Because their hands were dirty. They didn't, they didn't think to wash their hands before touching somebody. Our people wasn't like that. Our people always, you read our book, our people always been clean. Books say every time something happened, you had to wash to get, you know what I'm saying, get, get clean before even. Right? That's how our whole book is set up. Let's go back. This is uh, this is uh, where we leave off. Matthew chapter seven, verse nineteen, verse twenty. Right. It's important to look at a person's behavior. It's Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty. Because it's the behavior. The behavior itself is what's going to separate the real from the fake. The behavior itself is one. Is what? Uh, give me uh, give me Second King. Give me 2 Kings uh, chapter 10. It's a man named Jehu, right? Jehu was the king of Israel, right? Jehu, as a king of Israel, he was looking and, and he was promoted to take down uh, Jezebel and King Ahab and all his sons and all his family, right? He even took down some of the kings of uh, Judah, right? So Jehu came up. 
And one of the bad problems was a whole bunch of false prophets in the land of Israel, just full of false prophets, disgusting, all over the place, right? Real quick, let's read what Jehu did to identify all the followers of these false prophets. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 10. Give me, uh, give me verse, give me verse 18. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall, shall serve him much. Uh-huh. Now, therefore... Call unto me all the prophets of Baal and his servants and all the priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it subtly to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. So now, look, Jehu is using their behavior to separate the real from the fake. He said, listen, if y'all serve this other guy, oh, come on. Oh, now the previous king, they served the other guys a little bit. Me? I serve the other guys a lot. So he tricking them into thinking, come serve the other guys. <laughs> Watch what happened. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel and all the worships of Baal came so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him, that was over the vestry, bring forth vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, unto the house of Baal and said unto the worshipers of Baal, stretch and look that there be here with you, none of the servants of Yahuwah, but the worshipers of Baal only. So now look how correct behavior separates incorrect behavior. If you serve Baal and you worship Baal, you're in this place. If you serve Yahuwah, you would have no business in this place, right? Watch what happens. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed 80 men outside and said, if any one of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that let him go, his life shall be for the life of him. If you let one of these people escape, your life is going to be for the life of the person that escaped. In other words, if you die, if one of them escapes, I'm going to kill you if your butt, if you let even one of them escape, I'm going to kill your butt. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said unto the guard and to the captains, go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought right? So they killed every one of the people that was in there worshiping Baal. And the only thing that got him there is their behavior. He just said, hey, if you serve Baal, come over here. And all of them were like, yeah, we serve Baal. And they went over there. He locked them in that thing, killed every one of them. Right? That is an example of how your behavior will separate you. If you serve Yahuwah, you didn't have nothing to do with that situation. There's another situation that's the opposite, right? We serve Yahuwah, and you know what I'm saying? We'll talk about that when we get into Acts, right? But your behavior will lead you to the place that you're supposed to be. And that doesn't always mean it's going to be pretty. Sometimes serving Yahuwah gets you killed. But that's what's supposed to happen to you. If you die doing what you're supposed to do, that's a very different thing from dying when doing what you're not supposed to do. If you die doing what you're supposed to do, you've taken the difficult path. You've taken the straight gate. You're going to be resurrected in the end. If you die doing what you're not supposed to do, that's a whole different situation. Go ahead and go back to Matthew. It's Matthew. Let's try to wrap this up real quick. It's Matthew chapter, uh, where are we up? Uh, verse two, uh, 7, verse 21. Matthew 7, 20. Watch what the book say. Wherefore, by, your, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now watch it. He said, not everybody that says unto me, master, master, will enter onto the kingdom of heaven. But what? But he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Right. Ooh. So the only one is going to be the one to do the will of his father, which is in heaven. 
Watch this. Keep going. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Right? So he said, it's a bunch of people that's going to say, Master, Master, haven't we prophesied in your name and cast out devils in your name and done mon many wonderful works in your name? Right? We've done all these good things in your name. Master, Master, haven't we done all these things? And guess what he's going to say to him? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I don't even know y'all, but. Right? They spent all this time prophesying his name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right? They spent all this that time having their hands. Zakai, come here. I said Zakai. They got like this, looking like people on the camera can't see it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a shalama. Booyaka. You know what I'm saying? And they got the they got the demon cast out of them, right? All these times, they spent their time doing wonderful works, miracles, all these different things. And when they do the miracle, real legit miracles, right? When they do the miracle, guess what they say? Oh, that's in Yahushua's name. And still, Yahushua going to look at them and be like, yeah, that was real prophecy. That was a real miracle. And you really did cast out a demon. And you did all that in my name. But guess what? Depart from me. I never knew you. That is what we're up against. It is not about we those of us who, who are reading the Bible in the year. Y'all remember Saul, right? Samuel. Samuel was told to select Saul as the first king of Israel. After he did that, he poured the anointing oil on him. After he anointed him, he told him, listen, go on out there and you're going to run into this group of people, the prophets, and you're going to start to prophesy. He said the spirit going to fall on you and then you're going to become another man and have a new heart and you're going to prophesy. Right. All these things happen. Those are all the things that supposed to happen to us as part of the gospel. Right. We supposed to become like new man, new men. The spirit is supposed to come and give us a new heart and we're supposed to be anointed and we're eventually supposed to prophesy. Right. All these things are signs of salvation, signs that the most high God is moving in your life. Right. All that happened to Saul. And in a few chapters later, guess what happened? Saul disobeyed God multiple times. And the most high God said, I have rejected you. Why? Because it doesn't matter about the prophecies that you do. Or any of this stuff. This You can really be given these gifts from God. And if you disobey him after having them gifts, he forgets all of it. Right? If you don't believe me, we don't have time. But go read Ezekiel chapter 33 or Ezekiel chapter 18. And it will tell you he forgets everything once you sin. And then once you turn and, and turn away from sin, he forgets all the sin. But if you righteous and you decide to sin, he forgets all the righteousness. What, however you die, that's how you're going to be remembered for him. If you die righteous, then you'll be remembered righteous. But if you die a sinner, then you're going to be remembered as a sinner. And none of us know when we're going to die. Know when we're going to die. So our goal got to be turn away from all the sins that Yahushua gave us which he's going to give us in Mark chapter eight, uh, Mark chapter seven. We're going to get to that in a little bit, right? We got to turn away from all those sins that Yahushua told us to turn away from. And we got to love our neighbor the way the law tell, taught us to love our neighbor, right? And if we do that, that is the law and the prophet, right? We, at the very least, could be least in the kingdom if we do that. That's the bare minimum, right? After that, you want to be great? We'll do the law. Read the law of Moses, teach people to do the law of Moses and keep the law of Moses. You do that, you will increase your greatness in the law. I mean, increase your greatness in the kingdom. Right? Keep going. Many will say unto me in that day, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do, do, does them, I will liken him as a wise man which built a house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, 
and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be like it unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came right? To pass. If you build your house on this word, in other words, if you build your life on the word and you tie yourself to the word, the word is not moving. The word is going to be the same. The rest of the world going to move. They're going to change up. Right? Every year they come out with studies talking about milk does your body good. Milk is unhealthy for you. Right? Oh, you should do the keto diet. By doing the keto diet, you actually lose a lot of nutrients. Every year they're going to come with something and they're going to tell you chocolate is great for your heart. Chocolate is bad for your teeth. Right? They're going to tell you something. They're going to they gonna contradict themselves. Every single year they come out with a study. They told us one year, COVID, 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 everybody's going to die. You have to get a vaccine shot. Then they come years later and be like, oh, it's just a mild version of the virus. You should still get the vaccine shot, but the vaccine shot can be dangerous to some people. <coughs> like, what are y'all talking about? What are we dealing with here? Who knows somebody who got the flu when, when COVID was out? You got the flu? You ain't got no darn flu. Right? Yeah, if you look at the stats on the flu during COVID, look, the flu always up every year. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, COVID come, the flu disappear. It virtually nobody, um, virtually nobody got the flu during the COVID pandemic. But all of a sudden, you got all these people with COVID. Hmm. I wonder why. Then that guy, guess what? Right after they say, all right, the pandemic is over, guys. Guess what suddenly came back? The flu. Everybody getting the flu again. As soon as we stopped testing for COVID, all of a sudden, oh, you got the flu again. Right? It's because these people don't really know what they're talking about. They change and they move and they switch up and things change. If you build your house on this word, if you attach yourself to the word, and you assign principles to yourself based off of the word and say, I'm going to do everything the word say, the world will move around you, right? Everything will be moving. Everything will be going all over the place. But it's like a compass, right? Like imagine a bunch of wind blowing and it's turning you around and you can't really see nothing. But all you know is you're supposed to be going east. If you ain't got no compass, how are you going to know where you're going? Wind knocking you... <laughs> Wait, which way was I going? I think I was going. You can't see nothing. There's wind and snow. Whoosh, wait, I think I was going this way. You don't know where you darn walking. Because the wind hitting you and turning you around. But imagine having a compass. Whoosh, okay, okay. Nope, need to get back on track. Whoosh, oh, nope, I need to get back on track. That's what the book is for us. It's going to always be stuff that turn us around and twist us and distract us and all that. We got to attach ourselves to this book and say, no. I need to forget about that stuff. I need to leave that stuff alone. I need to I need to focus myself on what I need to focus on and keep living our life according to this book. And it's not as hard as people will make you think it is, but it's definitely the difficult path. Keep going. Watch this. And it came to pass when Yahshua ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Look, he taught... As one having authority is not as the scribes. Right? Keep going. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, after this, he stopped. Keep going. What did it say? It said that what? Chapter 8 then? Yeah, chapter 8 and 8. What did it say? Verse 1. When he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Oh, I thought he said something fly, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all should have stopped there or something. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm thinking about. I thought it was something fly that came at the end. But all right, that's that's all we got. Uh, any questions? No. Bam, bam. Ah. Bam, bam. I got your chin. Let me see. I got your chin. I got his chin. Let me see. Bam. I got your chin. Stand up, boy. Go ahead, come on. Come on. You 
good. Come on. Any questions? No questions? Bow! That would have been it there, boy. That whole chin would have been tucked. You ever, you ever hit, look, you hit somebody right in the chin, they whole chin going to be right here. There ain't nothing wrong with you. Stand up. Let me see. I don't think it's nothing Hey, what's up, boy? Hey, All man. right, we're going to pray out. I'll see y'all tomorrow at Sabbath, I mean, at uh, Fellowship Hour.